Hello everyone, this is Dr. Adam Stewart from stewartmedicine.com. I'm just going to show you a, a little bit of a toolbar and a, a package of, of EMR tools that I use for mental health and depression visits. Um, I'm just going to show, start with this. This this is a fake patient. Uh, her name is Melanne Colley, a uh, 41-year-old female teacher. Um, and and uh, I'm just going to walk you through some of the, the features here. So. This is the encounter, or this is the toolbar that is triggered by certain keywords like, say, depression or anxiety in the patient profile, or even uh, keywords like depression or anxiety in today's visit note. And the first button is, a, is simply an encounter assistant that does what's called what I call the level one screen, or which is basically the PHQ two screen for general depression. Um, and let's say that they answer positive to one of these questions. So if I click that, that opens up a hidden section uh, that allows me to do some follow-up. Often I find that uh, this happens on the way at the end of the visit that you might be suspecting that someone's depressed and, and the, the screen might be positive. So you might not have enough time to go into the, the full details uh, or the full diagnosis at that visit. So as long as we may make sure that the patient is safe and no suicidal ideations or, or homicidal ideations, um, I click that off and that documents that and then I can maybe book a follow-up uh, in the future. Uh, one of the things I, I like to do uh, now is, is get some baseline metrics uh, using things like PHQ-9 scores. This will bring up the handout um, or, and, and even some other ones like GAD-7s or the Sheehan Disability Score or the BCCCI. Uh, those are all validated scores. For those of you using Ocean tablets, this type of thing will just quickly allow you to even add those to your tablet, and then the patient can complete that on the way out, as again, having confirmed that they're not suicidal initially. So from there, you click finish and this will just, this actually, this was a duplicate note, but this is the note that, that actually uh, uh, prints out. And, and this here is a unique identifier. A patient had mental health visit today. It's all one string of letters, which allows you to then track mental health visits or build searches off them uh, and things like that. So let's say the patient then comes back for a level two. So this button here opens up the, my, what I call the level two uh, diagnosis for, for depression or mental health and here I'm just going to collapse the patient profile but leave the toolbars open so we can have more screen here so again I use ocean for a lot of these metrics so I can just click that here uh, this is a you know for exploring how far the symptoms are have been going on you know four weeks uh, since last visit since I last saw them maybe they feel course. Um, key things like diagnosing, uh, ruling out psychosis or other differentials like bipolar. Again, uh, so no, confirming no suicidal ideations. And here's a little free text box that I, I use to just uh, generally put in any anything that doesn't fit into, into the checkboxes and that just to give a flavor for what's going on. Here's a section for the various stressors, uh, you know, um, partner, Stressor got laid off, drinks alcohol perhaps. Um, the good thing about encounter assistance is if any of these things sections that I don't um, fill out, they'll, they won't print it into the final note. Again, here's a free text section. You know, mother died last year perhaps. Here's a section just to quickly document uh, substance use and lifestyle things. So maybe the person's drinking a lot of alcohol. Um, maybe their sleep is interrupted. Pain, chronic pain. None. Again, free text area. Now here's an area. These this is an area that allows me to if I'm using metrics, uh, um, metric based care through through things like PHQ nines or G eighty seven scores. This, this here will allow me to graph the scores over time. And that's uh, that's important for when you're trying to make clinical decisions right at your fingertips. You can see that as 
well, you'll see that for this patient, I've also got the toolbars up here showing uh, the most recent score for these validated scales. Again, PHQ-9, GAD-7, Sheehan Disability, the LEAPS, and the BCCCI. The FIBSER is actually a, a scale that I'll show you in a, in a little bit that shows um, the severity of side effects to the medications. So these, but these are also not only show you the, the most recent value at your fingertips, but if you click them, they also graph the values as well. So I might want to document here that things are getting better or worse or staying the same. Um, a physical exam section that uh, defaults to normal, but you know, you can type over whatever. Again, this is still in the early uh, state. We haven't officially diagnosed the patient at this with, with depression at this uh, section yet, the level two. So you need, it's important to rule out organic causes and differential diagnoses. So here is a uh, flow sheet that I've built at your fingertips that, that, that can quickly bring up relevant um, lab work that, that you may want to check or make sure is updated uh, for the patient. And if you wanted to do that, here's a little button up here that will insert my lab rec. And you might even do something neat with like a fatigue button or a depression button that can print off all the different things. Now, in this day and age with, uh, that it's important to be uh, financial, financially responsible with healthcare resources, you obviously wouldn't always be ordering this whole thing, but sometimes I find it easier to add, add in and then subtract as I need to some of the things out of there. But in any case, that, that's a quick thing at your fingertips to help you do that. Um, so I might, maybe I already have the labs on hand that I need. Maybe I want to say, you know, check TSH. So at the end of this visit, I, I with, the, with the PHQ-9 score and all of that, I should be able to make a diagnosis uh, based on the history. So sometimes I might say, you know, depression, there's some situational stressors. There's, uh, they're, they are or aren't using substance abuse and whether or not a form one is indicated. And again, some of the diagnosis won't fit into the nice check boxes, so a free text area. So then we get down to the plan section. And I've got some standard disclaimers here, or standard uh, type notes, that the, the type of thing that I always say, you know, discuss meds, lifestyle, uh, counseling options. So if I click here, this opens up my local resources for uh, counseling options. So 310 open, maybe go to my family health team. Maybe I want to go to direct the patient to Mood Gym. So that, that, or that's an online free resource or eCouch. Or if I maybe want to refer the patient within my own family health team, that inserts our custom form automatically that does our, our inter uh, allied health referrals. So, and then this will actually message my allied health professional booker to, to book the visit based on that referral sheet when I click finish down here. But let's say I wanted to, the patient decided they wanted to do lifestyle modifications, so that opens up a section here. And if I wanted to give the patient a handout on depression and exercise, it is available at my fingertips there. Um, or they want to work on sleep or what have you. Let's say the patient has financial strain. So you might want to direct them to the local social services. Or if we get into mood medications. So th this will here will bring up favorite prescriptions. And so I can pick from any one of these options. When I click finish, it will default and automatically import the, the prescription. Here is a the, the standard device that I always give people. Uh, behind the scenes is, is the actual script that I always tell people. You know, it takes four to six weeks for effect. Don't stop the medication too soon. Uh, side effects are usually mild tolerable and go away within two weeks. So that's all, all documented because that's the same thing I usually say every time. And then sleep medications, the same type of thing, some favorite prescriptions. Uh, I might, I have a, uh, sometimes I give patients a no more than five dose per week um, policy on sleep medications, you know, emphasized uh, sleep hygiene. So, and at the, at the end here, some people, some patients find that 
they actually get some positive reinforcements from, from a mental health report card. So this is just at the click of a button. This is showing the validated scales, what they mean in layperson terms, gives the patient a feel for where they are. More, most importantly, if they're having some successes or, or maybe uh, plateauing, or we can we can graph some of these validated scales on the side. And that's that's important for the patient and for us to be making decisions. So when I finish this, a few things are going to happen. One, you'll see that it automatically brought in my favorite prescription for citalopram that I have. So just a tab through we'll can prescribe that. The other thing it does is it's it's automatically pre-populated this message to my booker as I, as I was mentioning earlier. So that's the level two screen. Now the, le the follow-up encounter assistant looks very similar to the, to the initial screen. The only thing is the the thing that's changed is the the, the cur uh, current med section so you can document yes they're on a medication. Presuming this since this is a follow-up there's a good chance they might be on a medication. You know, is the medication helping? Good help. Maybe they're having side effects. This is that graph of a FIBS or if you're using that scale for, for doing that. And if you didn't, let's say you wanted to bring it up. Again, I'm doing a lot of this 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 metrics and questionnaires with with um, with Ocean tablets. But over here, if I wanted to bring this up in the visit, here's my FIBS or encounter system, as well as here's a drop-down menu box for all the you know, PHK-9 and all the other scores if I need to do to them in an actual visit. But the FIBSER is a pretty similar or pretty simple scale that gives you a numeric value that helps tell us the severity of symptoms. So then if I graph that, it'll actually start to graph that point there. So at the end here, same type of thing, although the Medication sections kind of change. I've left some things for de de discontinuing the medication, increasing the dose, or maybe adding an adjunct as well. That standard disclaimer and some free text. Same with the medication, you know, maybe stopping the medication, maybe it wasn't working so well. So that's the notes section, but here's, an, here's the other half to the plan section. Um, there's an encounter assistant that I've made that instead of spitting out a finished visit note, it spits out. Um, a letter to the patient with all of the detailed follow-up plans. So this is the patient mood plan encounter assistant. So in here, there's detail. This is all the resources are local to my area, but 310 open. This checkbox looks very simple, 310 open, but in, when the letter is actually printed to the patient, it's going to say uh, what 310 open is. That's our local crisis number, a brief paragraph, their phone number, their address, and how to book an appointment. Similarly, um, if I want to refer them to the online resource Blue Gym or maybe Al-Anon, these types of things can be easily printed off. And then here again is my inter-family health team access with the click of a button to a, inserts my referral form, as well as uh, if I check the, this box, that will message my booker just like it did in the last section. Now, Ontario Works, here's the, again, the brief blurb on our local office, how to, what the phone number is, how to get there. Um, maybe they're having financial strains. So here's actually a, the uh, the seven tips for poverty letter. Just prints off right at their fingertips that they make sure that they've done those steps to make sure they're qualifying for all the potential programs and, and benefits that they might qualify for. Um, here is a, my standard advice. That 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 standard script that I give on mood medications, I actually um, print that out and and. and in layperson terms, you know, it takes four to six weeks for effect and all and all of that things, but in a in a in a language that patients can understand. Um, same with the, my advice on sleep medications, I might refer them to my website uh, for for the section on sleep uh, sleep advice or sleep hygiene. Or if I want some handouts, there's handouts here. Again, I can quickly give that to the patient if they want to choose exercise. That's that exercise handout again, or if uh, healthy eating, maybe they want to direct them to Eat Right Ontario, or here's a handout on emotional eating that I could quickly give the patient. Addiction services handout with all the things. And uh, here's some some things on Greg Dubert's um, CBT 
uh, for the, the his articles were published a few years ago in, in sections on some brief CBT techniques you could do with patients in this, even in the time frame of five to ten minute visits. Um, so I've actually got handouts linking to them for mainly for the physician to uh, as a refresher if we needed to, to remind ourselves but also some patients might be able to even uh, print these off and take them home themselves and self-treat. So if you, I won't go into detail here, but this is a little fill in the check boxes for um, the type of thing that uh, the CBT techniques that Greg Dubler was suggesting. So when I click finish here, this is going to be a note, or sorry, a letter that I can address to the patient. And you'll see it's all written out in detail. The, the one, the letter serves as documentation in my note, but it also has uh, all the details on these various resources on where to go, the websites and phone numbers if needed. Very useful for, for patients. Now, I'm just gonna archive that again. Um, Mental Health Member I said that all the visits have this kind of thing embedded in them. This patient had mental health visit today. It doesn't really show up that well here, but if I, this is a filter that just filters out those notes. So this filters, even though the patient has notes on sore throats and back pains and things like that, this just filters out mental health notes. And this is useful for allied health professionals, maybe your mental health worker who's just uh, interested in the mental health notes uh, as well. Uh, that's a quick button to insert that report card that I showed you, the lab flow sheet if I wanted to. These are all the graphing things, and these are handouts that you might want at your fingertips very quickly. So uh, that's a very fast rundown on this EMR uh, package of tools, but I um, hope you found it helpful, and please contact me if you want any, any more information.